My friends know that I'm not the friend that they should call when they have that crazy idea because nine times out of 10, I'm going to push them off the ledge to do it. And this is why. So it's about three years ago and I heard God say, don't shut up about it. And I thought, what? God, do you talk like that? And he was like, yeah, babe, I do. And I was like, babe, <laughs> like what is going on here? And it was the beginning of this hugely transformational time in my relationship with the Lord. And I thought, okay, all right. I really feel like you're telling me not to stop squawking about my dreams. Don't stop talking about them. Keep believing in them. Keep sharing them. Keep speaking them into life and into existence. And that was a radical thing for me at the time, because at the time we were living in the apartment, which some of you guys might remember. And I was just longing so deeply for a homestead and for a farm and for more land and for animals and for all of these things that just seemed so far off. So to think that it was valuable for me to keep believing in my dreams, it just seemed so far off. This was before the greenhouse, before the worm farm, before this property. And I look at where I am today and am so thankful that that, that young woman back in the day spoke life into those dreams because I don't think I would be here right now had I not taken action and kept believing in those dreams back then. There we go. <laughs> some of these zucchinis didn't come up, so I'm gonna plant some beans instead. But I think in a way, making your dreams, talking about them, not giving up, is like sowing a seed, right? And then a seed needs nutrients and water and meat. It's important to start by planting a seed in your heart. thing is that it's really easy to give up on a dream or to say that it's too grand or too big or too whatever. It is so easy to give up on a dream. And I know that. I know that from personal experience, despite my convictions that dreams are important and that they're important to listen to. I personally know how easy it is to give up on a dream because I lived in that season for a hot second. And let me tell you, it really stunk. In my work as a counselor, I work a lot with people on digging up limiting beliefs. In other words, what are those things that are no longer serving you, that are dead and entangled and that really don't serve a purpose in your heart or in your mind anymore? And how can we eradicate those and do something different? Sometimes we work to get rid of the old belief and other times you just got to plant a new one. That is the thing about dreams, is that if you're going to dare to believe in those dreams, dreams require action, or it's just so much easier to not take the action. And another unfortunate but very true thing is there are a lot of people who choose to hate on other people's dreams, and that is also just taking easy street. That also requires no action, and it's just so easy to live inside that comfort zone. And the truth is we don't grow in the comfort zone. We grow right outside of that comfort zone. I think my little garden helper just woke up. Did you have a good nap? Did you have a 
a good nap. Oh my goodness, friends. I'm getting my teeths. Oh my goodness. That's so hard to be a baby getting teeth. Yeah. They're coming. They're coming. Okay, back to what I was saying is that we don't grow in the comfort zone and that if we're going to dare to believe in our dreams, we have to push ourselves a little bit outside of that comfort zone. And I'm so glad that I decided to take action three years ago and just start a garden on the apartment patio. And a lot of you know, I failed so hard. Like I failed miserably. I put uncomposted wood chips on the garden thinking that I was mulching it, thinking that I had this great deal that I'd gotten these wood chips for free. Ugh. I ended up leaching all of the nutrients out of the soil into the wood chips and killed my garden. <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but that is one of those situations where I tried to do the research, I thought I was doing a good thing, and it turns out I was not, and it was risky. And you know, luckily I failed small and I learned big, right? Like that was a relatively small failure. Oh, you want the tripod? We just want everything. We want to grab everything these days. Anyway, I'm really glad that I decided to start because it gave me an opportunity to make something small and learn from it and start the adventure. You only get one life, right? So say yes to some adventure when you can. The thing that Tommy and I have been talking about a lot lately is as we're turning 30 this year, you just turned 30, my 30th is coming up in November and it's like, we only get this one life, so what are we going to do with it? We only get this one life, so let's live it well and what does that look like? And honestly, it means some really exciting things and when I know more, I will share more. Uh, but we have some really exciting things in the works and I'm excited to share with you. But it's requiring us to step outside of our comfort zone and to push ourselves a little bit. But it's a good thing. It's a good thing to do that. Huh. Huh. Just like those little teeths are pushing through. It's uncomfortable, but then you're gonna have teeth and it's gonna be so good. <laughs> what you wanna do? You wanna water the garden. Yeah. Yeah, you do. I know you do. You love to water the garden. You wanna water it with me? Okay. You ready? Gonna go water the garden? Come on, let's go. As a lot of you guys know, that apartment patio garden eventually grew into this. We moved to San Diego. It was an offer we couldn't refuse, and we decided that it was best for our family to move. And we moved here. I know, I know. And it was during a what I call a jubilee year because it was the year that California's drought ended due to torrential downpours, and we were literally house hunting in flash flood warnings. I know, it was before your time. And I was exhausted. I remember turning to Tommy one day and I, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I thought, I am trying to do this on my own strength and I need to rely on the Lord for this. I can't do this on my own strength. I know. And I turned to him and I said, God is gonna have to show us the house because I can't do this on my own. And literally that day, I remember thinking, what if it was a house? Like what if God really did provide a house? That day, this house came on the market and we put in our application. Two weeks later, we moved. It was so quick and so amazing and such a God thing. And we looked at each other in this backyard and we said, oh my gosh, there's room for a garden. Oh my gosh, we can expand the worms. Like, oh my gosh, we can build stuff and do the things that we want to do here. And it might just be a stepping stone house, but it's a step in the right direction. And that is a beautiful thing. On that note, welcome to my very imperfect garden bench, potting bench, garden area situation. It's a very tangible reminder that things might not always be exactly how you envisioned them, but they might be a step in the right direction and that can be a very good thing. Sometimes we get ourselves in this black and white thinking is what we call it in my field. It's like black and white thinking, all or nothing. You know, I either have the farm or I have nothing at all. And 
I mean, <laughs> if this little modern suburban homestead is proof of proof of anything, it's proof that you can do stuff where you are and and learn where you are and make the most of it and still long for whatever is next. And believe me, we are longing and we are dreaming for whatever is next. And I'm starting to get really excited for that. These tomatoes? Yeah, we're learning to grow tomatoes. These are yellow pear and yellow pear and some sunflowers and some San Marzanos. What this one? Oh, very gentle. Good job. I know. Good job. Should we water these too? Okay, let's go get our waterer. Is that a good spot? Are you the queen baby? <laughs> I'm out here right now and I'm watching the birds and they're feeding off the garden like crazy right now. There's so many things that have gone to seed and it's again another one of those tangible reminders that when you choose to do something good and you take action towards your dreams, whatever they may be, you're affecting a whole ecosystem of change as well and it could be incredibly beneficial to that ecosystem. Oh, hi. Your actions can have a positive effect on so many other people and things and species for that matter. Taking positive action has a positive impact. And another tangible reminder of that are my DMs. I am still getting used to this idea that like what we're doing here has an impact on the world. Granted, that is why we share. That is why I'm documenting this and sharing it with you guys in hopes to inspire you to make your waiting rooms your classrooms and to make the most of it and to throw some hey it's a good life on things and to believe in yourself and your dreams. But it still just shocks me when I get these messages, especially lately with the worm farm video. So many of you guys have loved that worm farm video and I want to share with you just one, one message I got this week. I just want to say a huge thank you. I don't even think I'll be able to convey my gratitude in words. Thank you doesn't seem like enough, but I don't know what else to say, so thank you, thank you. I'm so grateful to have found your channel. I found you through Jess and Jill, but it wasn't until I watched some of your videos where things really started to shift and change for me. I found myself placing so many limits on myself and telling myself I wouldn't be able to have a farm. Watching your videos has shifted my perspective profoundly. I never thought I'd say this, but I can't wait to start my worm farm. I think I started feeling stuck thinking it wasn't worth trying because I didn't ever, I didn't think I'd ever have this big regenerative sustainable farm one day. I started feeling defeated, like why bother trying at all? What helped most was seeing how you were able to make the most. <laughs> what helped me the most was seeing how you were able to make the most, make that amazing greenhouse tables and all those raised beds. Seeing how easy it would be to start a worm farm while we're living in apartments. We just moved to an apartment or townhouse this year with absolutely no grass. After watching some of your videos, I feel inspired again and I started up containers outside our front door and rented a raised bed a garden in a garden a few blocks away from where we live. It's small but it's a start in the right direction and it already feels really good. <laughs> that really blesses me. Thank you for that message. I just have to confess something to you guys. As somebody who used to watch farming videos curled up in a ball on the sofa under my blanket, laptop in hand, crying, just crying, longing so bad for a different lifestyle to get out of the city, to farm, to start growing food. I'm somebody <laughs> whose husband would walk out into the living room and catch me crying underneath my blanket. It literally became a joke that if Tommy came out to the living room and I was there curled up under a blanket, laptop in hand, crying. He knew I was watching farming videos. <laughs> like it's sad, but it's true. So please take it from me as somebody who just shut down my dream and stopped believing in it and then realized I need to take action on this. Even if it's a small step, it's a step in the right direction. Please take it from me that I know that you have a dream for a reason. I know that you have a dream. 
I know that you have a dream because we all have dreams, whether we've buried them down or we just don't talk about them anymore. I know that you have a dream and I firmly believe that in our passions is where we will find our purpose. And I'm believing that for you. Even if you can't believe it for yourself yet, I am choosing to believe that for you because I know in my heart of hearts that it's true. I am believing in you, that in your passions, you will find your purpose. And I will totally call you out and push you off the ledge into those dreams because if I could do one thing the rest of my life, it would be that. And that's what we're working towards, one day at a time. So thank you so much for joining us today, you guys. It's been great to be with you. You guys leave feeling encouraged and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye friends, we'll see you next time. <laughs> I'm tired, no, 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 no. <laughs>